My name is Heather Feather. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and today I want to talk about the art of conversation. I recently have gotten to a place in my life where I feel ready to date, and I am kind of a hermit. <laughs> I like to be in my house. <laughs> it's very lovely and comfortable. Um, you know, I go out, I go to different coffee shops, and I have ways in which I engage with the public to get work done. And it's a pandemic, and it's kind of a normative to engage online. So I've joined OkCupid, I've joined Bumble, and I've started talking to new people, just giving myself exposure and opportunities to practice the art of conversation. And what I'm realizing is that this art is, um, you know, there are aspects of our modern age that may be losing sight of this beautiful art, the art of being able to have a conversation to feel comfortable. One, one way, one way we could just point to, when I was growing up, of course, we had phones and we didn't have text messages. There were no emojis. There were no text messages. There were no conversation happened through listening to the sounds coming from someone else's vocal cords. And um, there were, you know, people hanging up on you. That could happen back then. People, a lot of conversations around, and they hung up on me. You know, like you can't really hang up on someone through text. So we kind of changed the dynamics of conversation a lot by moving to text being a more normative model. I know a lot of people that are in their 20s and 30s that are very uncomfortable to take a phone call because they don't have that training. They don't have that conditioning. They're not conditioned to answer the phone and hear someone's vocal cords. And that can create a certain level of anxiety because they'd rather, no, I'd rather just text. It doesn't, you know, I don't want to disturb. And, um, and so that makes sense, you know. Uh, but we are, even if we are typing out like paragraphs or, you know, sentences in response to getting to know someone online, that does require the art of conversation skills that would be typically more present in having a conversation with someone. You're going to want to get to know someone before you maybe go have a coffee with them. It's like, who are you? Are you a total freak? What is your, you know, are you a good kind of freak? What are you? you know? So like, you want to get to know someone. So, so what I typically do as I'm out there looking around to get to meet people in my new city that I haven't met before and find someone with mutual interest is I'm looking at their profile. So if somebody posts, let's say that they love comedy TV. Great. Heather Feather loves to laugh. I love it that laughing is clearly a priority because you had five options and one of the ones you chose had the word comedy, which says to my consciousness, laughing is important to you. But there's a difference between comedy TV and comedians. And I love stand-up comedy. I love all comedy. I'm trying to laugh. If you aren't laughing at it, you may be taking it all too seriously. <laughs> and that's why so many people are depressed. So let's laugh at it. So. What I will do is I will ask someone if I see, <clears throat> hey, I love comedy TV. I will look at their profile. I will find mutual interest. So the first thing I'm going to do is observe. I'm going to observe their information. I'm going to get to know them a little bit. And I'm looking for where do we align? Because a really quality relationship is usually where two people come together and they have a similar vision. If you have different visions, like I just want to party all the time, it's like I want to evolve and grow. You're not going to wind up at the same place. One of you is going to enroll the other in some type of alternate path potentially, or you're just constantly going to butt heads because you're trying to go different directions. So one of the things you want to do is you want to look at their profile and get to know them. So you start through observation, you observe them. And what you're looking for, you're trying to discern and or find or seek mutual interest. So the second step is look for mutual interest as you observe the person. Okay, this is a mutual interest. Comedy, that's that's mutual. Oh, art. Okay, that's a mutual interest. Are you an artist yourself? Are you? Do you enjoy going to um, art galleries or you know small art shows or what is it about art that you love? What are your mediums of art? So what you do is you observe the person, you seek and find that which is a mutual interest, and then you converse about that. And the way you converse is you want to always try to formulate questions. Because in order for a conversation to be two-way, in order for it to be a dialogue instead of a monologue, you would want to ask questions because you, number one, it expresses to the other person, I have a vested interest in getting to know you. I'm not just here to talk about myself, 
and not get to know you. I have a vested interest and that's why I'm asking you questions. Um, number two, it keeps the conversation open. If you write to somebody and just give them a bunch of statements, they have nothing to say to that. Can I, if you send me a paragraph of information, pick out of it and keep the conversation going? Yes, but it's if we're going to have a conversation, it's like a fire. And I don't want to have to be the one that just sits and stokes the fire the, the whole time. What is supportive and helpful is for both parties to tend to the fire so that there's heat that builds in the conversation, so that there's interest, so that there's intrigue, so that there's... So, so one thing I would say is to be outward focused and willing to get to know a little bit about the person in a conversation, it, whether you're doing this through online dating or even just meeting someone, you know, next to you in a cafe, it's like, Oh, I like your kicks. I, okay, cool. I like that notebook. That's a weird backpack or whatever. You can just take in the information through observation of what is a mutual interest. And those become points of conversation that you can get into with that two legged. Oh, wow. Those are really cool kicks. I have a whole collection of kicks and those are awesome. They're so bright red, fun. You know, I'm wearing my bright red Pumas. So I'm like <laughs> thinking about kicks right now, but like, so, so you can, you can discern, okay, this is, this is something that we might have a mutual interest in. And then you can converse about it. One of the things that we, we tend to lose a little bit in conversation is that mutual interest in another two-legged part of brain programming through being engaged with technology all the time is to constantly think of the self. Did I get likes? Did they respond? Did they reply to my text? That's a lot of the consciousness in the modern age. Like when I grew up, it was like, I wasn't sitting like, did somebody call me back? I would know they called me back because the phone would be ringing and probably I would miss it because I was outside running around like a wild animal. So, you know, there, there wasn't any like, sitting and waiting for the external world to give me validation through technology. So, so that brain programming and that brain conditioning, which is going on, can cause us to constantly be thinking of the self. So the first thing we do is step outside of the self. We observe the other person. We take an interest in the other person. We want to get to know them. And so we observe what we can of them. And then we look for mutual interests so that we can go into a conversation that has meat on its bones. It has something to offer because it's a mutual interest. It's something that we know about, you know, and, and you can even look for things that interest you that maybe you don't know about. Oh, I noticed you had an aerospace pen and I've always wanted to fly a plane. I don't know the first thing about it. Why do you have that? What does that mean? Do you fly planes? Where did that come from? Do you, are you in an aerospace program? What's going on? You know, so you can actually also find mutual interests that you'd like to learn about. But once you've observed what you can about the person from their profile, from your interaction with them, and you found mutual interests, then what you want to do is to engage and usually with a polite opener, like, hi, nice to meet you. So if I find someone's profile on Bumble, I'm the person that can respond. So if I find someone's profile, I'll be like, hi, my name's Heather. Nice to meet you. That's how I will start. And then I'll say, I noticed that you like comedy TV. Cool. I love stand-up comedy. Do you like stand-up comedy at all? And if so, who are some of your favorites? I'm not going to throw a bunch of questions because... For those of us, uh, I'm 45, I grew up where I'm used to having longer conversations where it's like, yeah, and then also this happened and then I have these thoughts and no, no, no. And because I'm used to being on the phone and not texting to communicate, but I'm used to having more robust communications, I at 45 may want to say a lot. <laughs> so instead what I do when I start to engage someone is I'm gonna ask ideally a couple of questions, a couple of questions based on mutual interests I found with that person. What I'm noticing is that a lot of two-leggeds, they don't respond to the questions. They sometimes just respond and talk. Oh yeah, I love stand-up comedy. I like this, I like that. And then it's like, okay, well you didn't ask me any questions. So now the conversation is dead. So, so in order for you to get to know me, you would have to take a vested interest in me. And you would also want to ask me questions like, who are some of your favorite comedians or, you know, something that keeps the conversation going. So what I historically used to do is I would use my art of conversation understandings and keep the fire going, keep the conversation going. And I would just keep stoking it. I would be like, Oh, 
You don't understand the art of conversation. Let me help you. Okay, great. Here's some of my favorite comedians. Hey, I noticed you also said you like true crime. Do you know Bailey Syrian? And so I would keep the conversation going. I no longer at 45 am willing to be the sole person that contributes to the art of conversation in a relationship because I can talk to myself and I enjoy my own company and I don't require a partner. I am interested in having one, but I, I love myself. I love the life I've created for myself and I'm interested in having a partner because I'm interested in having somebody that evolves me, that awakens me, that brings conversation into my life. And if you don't have that foundational aspect, I'm bored. Like, what are we doing? You know, what are we doing? Okay. The sex is great, but it's not that great because in the morning we have to have a conversation. So that should be entertaining. <laughs> that should be a good time. We should like enjoy each other's company. So, so part of that is being able to ask questions of the other person, recognize and look before you send a communication. Are there questions in here? Are there things that keep the conversation going? Did I respond? That's a great question to ask yourself. Did I respond to the questions they asked? Because every question they ask is a conversation opener. And when you don't respond, you're collapsing doorways that could open more, more potential conversation. Um, what I think if somebody is just like, hey, or like, so girl, or like, you know, what I think, and I think a lot of people that are intelligent will think this is, you, you must not be very interesting if you don't have anything to bring to the table of conversation. And that's not definitively true. You could be a fascinating person that just doesn't know the art of conversation, but, but you can be losing opportunity in this life because you're, you're lacking. Number one, the first thing is to be confident, confident enough to say, hi, nice to meet you. Here's some things that we mutually like, and here's some questions I have about your interest in it. You know, it requires confidence as a general rule to engage in a way that is going to be healthy in relationship to others. And it requires a willingness, a desire, an interest in getting to know the other person. And the way we get to know someone is through asking questions, not making assumptions, but asking questions. I noticed you said you like punk. What does that mean to you? You know what I mean? That might mean to them that they like Green Day. I don't really consider Green Day punk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, teach their own. I'm sure, like, that some people are like, oh my God, Green Day is so punk. But I grew up on the Dead Kennedys. I grew up on No Means No. Like, that's not, that's like modern day attempt at maintaining punk. You know what I mean? And teach their own. I'm not right. It's probably the category it would go in. But that, I don't listen to Green Day. You know, teach their own. So, so it's, when you start to ask, you may even find things where it's like, oh, that's not really totally mutual interest. I just, ha there's a nice guy I'm talking to. He wants to go get a coffee. So I left that to him because number one, I don't want to go on a first date with someone at the coffee shops I frequent. I'm trying to see your mug up there all the time. And number two, like, I want to see where you go. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the date option up to you. So I was like, Hey, where do you want to meet? And he straight up like Starbucks. I was like, Oh, <laughs> Okay. And it's not about, I'm not, it's, it's just, we're looking for mutual interests. It's like, that wouldn't be, I would want to, like, if I were in his shoes, I would want to find a funky, fresh little coffee shop. We've got a lot of those here. Um, that has a cool environment. I mean, I'm an INFJ. I will straight up go and check out all the coffee shops and be like, this is the dopest coffee shop and that's where we're going. But, but so that's okay. I'm going to go meet this person at a Starbucks, you know, but, but you can also leave some of the responsibility of the weight of coming together and getting to know one another in each person's hands. I, I'm, I'm in the art of conversation. I'm looking for somebody that is invested in getting to know me because what I know about myself is that I'm really invested in people. I'm in, I'm like deeply invested. I'm so interested. I'm so curious. I'm so intrigued. Like, who are you? What makes you tick? What else do you like? Oh my God. Why do you like horror? You know what I mean? Like I love the diversity of humanity and I love having a lot of tickly things we can get into and in getting to know our differences and our sames. So it's just interesting to consider, am I well-versed and practicing the art of conversation when I'm conversing with others. You can always subscribe to Rare Bird Medicine on YouTube. You can like and comment there, blessed be.